Hey everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Birchill. Welcome to a mixed media tutorial. This time we're doing a journal cover. So I'm starting off with vintage papers and I'm simply gluing them down with my fluid matte medium onto the gessoed cover. Now I've taken this off from the spirals and I've gessoed the tops and the backs because I don't create very neatly and so inevitably there's going to be paint on the back side so I will be decorating both the front and the back cover both sides and they each get a bit of a different um, look but it's all related and in the same vintage theme. Now these papers, because I'm layering them up and they're ripped, they're going to end up giving wonderful texture to the background. They are also going to peek through the final layer. So you're going to see bits and pieces. Here I have some napkin from one of my napkin journal tutorials, some leftover piece. It had some vintage scroll on there and it adds some lovely, lovely texture and as well as the pattern there. So I'm going to do this application to the front of the journal and the back of the journal. The insides will get a different treatment. So once that's dry, I am going to put modeling paste through this linked tiles stencil. I'm applying it with a old credit card or key card, which is my favorite way of applying it. And I'm putting it in both corners. I like adding more texture to the front cover. It just gives it a nice feel. And off this goes to dry. So this is a rice paper that I got from Ninny's Napkins and you can go to the description box for a discount code. Now this is a wonderful piece of art by itself and I struggle in trying to figure out how it's going to work on my piece. And the only way I know how is to take a pair of scissors to it and cut out some of the elements so I can play with it and see how it works. Rice paper is fairly easy to cut, cut out. It's unlike napkins. And I find that I can use my scissors and I still don't get a raised edge or anything. Now all these little bits of rice paper that have some script in it and some other design elements, I save this all in a in a container. And I'll use it on another vintage background or another project. Here I'm using a sink liner or a piece of a sink liner and I'm applying heavy gesso to it and pressing into it. Now this is going to give texture, not quite as much as the modeling paste does, but it's going to do some. Now I found some sink liners with some wonderful textures in Amazon and I'll put a link to those as well if you're interested. So I'm on the back. I did not put the modeling paste, but I am putting a little bit of this stamping with the heavy gesso. So it's going to have a little bit of texture. So once the both sides are totally dry, I'm applying some red to it. Now the reason for this is because the poppy's red and I want the background to blend with it, but I don't want it so vivid red. So I'm removing some of it. I just want hints. And of course, it gets out of control, but it's all handable. It's all doable. Now I'm taking my burnt umber and applying it and taking it out. I don't want this to get too dark. In hindsight, I could have left the background fairly light and gone with more of a cream color. So if I was doing that again, I would try it with cream. Now I'm applying a little bit more of the burnt umber, going back and forth, adding, taking away, pushing it into the nooks and the crannies, 
lifting it off the high points of the texture paste, the modeling paste. Now the poppy doesn't stand out so much, but I know that I'm going to be shading and that's going to help it stand out. I'm also putting a little bit of rubbing alcohol on my cloth here and rubbing to get off a little bit more to get some light areas. Now I'm adding white here on a shelf liner and I wanted to lighten it, but I wasn't liking the white on here. It didn't fit my sense of the, the vintage vibe. So now I'm adding black. Again, with the shelf liner or rubbing it with the pad of my finger. Remember, I want this to look vintage and old and grunged. So I'm tracing around the poppy here with my Stabilo All Pencil, which will come off with a baby wipe if I need it to. Now the reason I'm tracing it is I want to glue this poppy down here, but I don't want it to get too dark. I want to keep or preserve the brightness of the color. So I am putting gesso down underneath where I'm going to glue the poppy down. And I'm doing this instead of gluing the rice paper onto a piece of copy paper or cardstock because I don't want to add that thickness. I want some of that texture from the modeling paste to come through the poppy and add to the whole thing. Wherever I went a little where I shouldn't, I can just take that brown and darken it, touch it up. This is my fluid matte medium, putting down a liberal amount, and then I'm pressing this into the texture paste, into the modeling paste. As I said before, the rest of that rice paper. I am using. I can use it for a four by four magnet. I can use it on a smaller art journal page. I can use it in combination with other rice paper bits and pieces or napkins. Here's the shading that I talked about earlier. I'm using my angle brush, my float acrylic technique to shade, and I'm shading on top of the poppy and then beside it on the outside. And then I'm adding a little bit of the black in some of the shaded areas of the poppy. I just wanna bring out what's already there. I'm not really changing it per se. Sometimes you've seen me do that. This is more of a wash and just a gentle shading. And hopefully you can see how just the little bit that I've done, I go back and forth and I add more, but that has added to it. Now I'm taking black and I'm edging around the front. This is framing. Now I'm doing this on a journal cover. You could do this exactly the way it is and do an art journal page or put this on a canvas. I'm adding, I believe I'm adding gold here on top of it, or I do add gold at some point in time. I'll be adding black here, just to on the high points. Again, I want it to be vintage and grunge it up. And I put one layer of shading, then I let it dry, then I come back and I do another one till I get the look that I like. Just adding a few more shading points, detail points. All to help the focal point pop off the darker background. Shading becomes very important when the background is very close to the same color. Now I'm adding some highlights. 
And this really starts to bring it to life. And I'm just touching it up where the, the original artist did it. I'm just adding another layer to brighten it with so it works on my application. And I add some, let it dry, come back again and again till I'm happy. Here's where I'm adding the gold to the high points of the modeling paste. Just that little bit of sheen. This is the cover of a journal. I want it to look rich and opulent, even though it's vintage. Then I decide to put some black acrylic paint with my French script stamp. Just another detail adding to the background. Now here's the back page. I am using that same stencil that I put the modeling paste through and I'm stenciling with the red that I'm using the script stamp. So I'm using all the same elements, maybe a little bit different. So they're all going to read like they belong together. I actually end up really liking how the back cover looked and I was almost wishing that I had put the poppy on, on it. Here I'm doing a wash with the raw umber. I did not put any glazing medium in this. It's just thinned lightly with water. And then I'm wiping it some of it back. There's the front and the back. They're the same, but different. Same colors, same elements, slightly different. The notebook here, the original color was blue, so that would not go well with the vintage cover, which is why I am, you know, working on it. So I'm really liking how it turned out. I reached in my sentiment pack, my, I think this was the short and sweet sentiment pack, and I cut, got the words, imagine the possibilities. And I love the black background with the white letters on that. I think it really pops with the vintage feel of this. White would look too stark. Just gluing it down with my fluid matte medium. And it's off. Now the inside covers, I have this English decoration stamp. And I'm stamping throughout the whole background. Now see how the paint got on there? Not to worry because I'm going to paint that out. Now this has been gessoed. This is a great vintage stamp, all-purpose vintage stamp. And it has little scrolls and all those things that you see on napkins and vintage papers. And here I can just pick and choose and apply them where I wish. I'm going to just put the raw umber on here with a makeup sponge, put a nice base coat. I'm keeping the inside covers very simple. I don't want a lot of fuss and muss, but I do want them to match the front covers. Now I'm taking that same stencil and I'm going to stencil on here with the brown and with a little bit of the black added. There's just the brown and I come back and I add some black just, and it really grunges it up, gives it that more vintage feel. Just covering it all up and I'm matching the stencil as best, best I can. 
This stencil you can also purchase at Ninny's Napkins. She carries a lot of the Crafters Workshop six inch stencils. And if you ask, she is more than willing to bring them in if there's something there that you would like to get. So here I'm splattering with gold. I splatter the front cover, let it dry, and then I do the inside covers as well. My Secura glaze pen. I'm just going around the sentiment just to finish it off and tidy up the raw edges. Then I put this book together. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give this a try. Any kind of coil book will work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you with the next video.